Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so we are picking back up again with the conclusion of Infinity Conflict, the Astral Regulator Thanos. And in this video, yes, Thanos will face off against the Living Tribunal, Infinity in Eternity, and everybody else that you could think of. And in fact, we're actually gonna see a surprise appearance from a really cool character, right? One that we never, almost never get to see. But in the last video, we basically kind of had this idea where you essentially had like future Thanos, right? And Thanos in this future looked like Eternity, but whatever it was that happened to him, he seemingly became this like, omnipotent sort of character. The idea behind this is that that modern day Thanos is more or less being guided by future Thanos. So we'll kind of get a, an answer to that question, a sort of, uh, of explanation as to what's going on. But with Eros, the brother of Thanos and Pip the troll trying to figure out what Thanos is doing and then in turn trying to find a way to defeat him, they've essentially just been following him throughout what he's been doing, right? So the idea was that Thanos had essentially managed to find some way to acquire a particular artifact, a particular device called the, the Astral Regulator or the Cosmic Regulator and then destroyed Mr death and really like absorbed her essence into himself and then became the new death basically meaning that thanos now controls the realm of the afterlife and so where he essentially teleports away eros and pip the troll follow him but they don't know exactly where he's going the best they can do is just kind of jump forward through time using their device taken by king the conqueror and then just try to understand what it is that's happening right so this is really just guess and check and so what they do is jump a year into the future and when they arrive a year in the future galactus's ship had basically just kind of crash landed into this realm and when they start inspecting they start looking around, they basically come to the realization that Thanos has been exceedingly busy. That not only did Thanos destroy and absorb Galactus, Thanos has also absorbed the Infinity Stones, he's absorbed Master Order, Lord Chaos, the Stranger, Sire, Hate, Mistress, Love, he basically absorbed all the cosmic entities into himself. And he's been busy. Now, all this happened off panel. I'm not really skipping over anything. We literally go from one page to this page. He's basically just been absorbing all the cosmic entities into himself. But the reality of where Eros and Pip the Troll are is that it's just kind of like, all right, so there's not a whole lot we can do here, right? Like in the present moment right now, there's nothing we can do to defeat Thanos. Like we're gonna have to find a way to go back in time and to basically keep this from happening. Now, here's the, here's the cool thing. Before you bounce, Jim Stalin plays time exceedingly smart in this story. He does it in a really, really cool way. And that's one of the things that a lot of writers kind of run into, one of the problems they run into. Bendis ran into that problem when it came to uh, Matthew Malloy. Different writers run into time travel with different problems. And more often than not, it's usually invoked as a means to end a story. Jim Starlin, Carlin? passes that and, and basically copes with it in spectacular fashion. But the cool thing about this is that Adam Warlock, you know, where you end up having Pip the Troll and uh, and, and Eros, who basically kind of jump forward and continue their journey and, and figuring out what the end game of Thanos is, Adam Warlock is resurrected. And one of the things that we had talked about in the last video is that Adam Warlock coming back the way that he did was kind of abnormal. It didn't always happen that way, that he always kind of had a, a particular form and function, right? Like a cocoon would manifest somewhere and Adam Warlock would start to regenerate inside of it. And then ultimately he would come out, he'd make a presence known and whatever story was going on that required him to be in that event. What was going on here were things like it was a resurrection process that wasn't normal, right? And so what this meant was that Adam Warlock didn't know entirely what was going on. And so when he basically hops back up and really kind of asks the question, what's going on with these changes in my resurrection process? He's met by the arrival of the Living Tribunal. And the Living Tribunal basically says, I'm the one behind all this. Like I'm the reason why you're resurrecting the way that you are. Now, one of the funny things about this is that when, when Adam Warlock starts asking questions like, okay, well, what's going on? on like like you know why am i here that kind of a thing the living tribunal says like we're outside of reality but like you are outside of the norm now there's a very particular meaning to that and we will find out what that meaning is later on in this video but the two of them get in a very in-depth discussion and the reason why is because of course you have the living tribunal kind of like is this multiversal overseer right so even if the living tribunal can be destroyed his job is to watch the multiverse and to safeguard it as best he can and so there's nothing that takes place inside of a universe across the entirety of the multiverse that the living tribunal doesn't know about whether or not he can stop it is a whole different argument, but he's always aware of everything that's happening, right? So multiversal awareness, it's part and parcel to his role. But of course, Adam Warlock also addresses the idea that the Living Tribunal, this version is basically an alternate reality version of Adam Warlock. For those of you guys who recall that, in the aftermath of Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers and Secret Wars, when the Living Tribunal and all the cosmic entities were destroyed, Jim Starlin wrote an Infinity comic that was a tie-in to it all more or less. It was kind of a loose event, but the notion was uh, the one above all needed a new Living Tribunal since 
since the Beyonders destroyed the previous one. And so Adam Warlock from an alternate reality was made into the new Living Tribunal. So that's just kind of a quick 30 second or a minute explanation. But as to the Astro Regulator and as, how, as to how it is, Thanos has this level of power. This all basically comes through an explanation from the Living Tribunal. And this is a really, really cool concept introduced by, uh, by Jim Starlin that's actually built on something else, right? So for the longest time, when it came to the multiverse in Marvel, Jim Starlin had introduced different things like the custodian of the multiverse and so on and so forth. But the idea here is that we, of course, have an infinite number of universes out there. The question that we always sort of asked here is what keeps one universe from crossing over into another? What Jim Starlin gives us here is the Astro Regulator. And what he says is that in every single universe that exists out there, there is an Astro Regulator, right? Every universe exists for every possibility. But the Living Tribunal chimes in and says the Astro Regulators are basically there to ensure that no universe crosses over into another. This is, in fact, Jim Starlin's adaptation of DC's Source Wall. That's more or less what this is, right? The idea that the Source Wall, that every universe has its own Source Wall, then the multiverse has its own Source Wall. And these are literal barriers around universes and around the multiverse that are designed to prevent universes from crossing over into other universes and multiverses from crossing over into other multiverses. Jim Starlin is essentially taking that idea and rolling it over and basically saying the Astro Regulator is designed for the purpose of ensuring that no universe crosses over into another. But it's a very complex network, right? And so essentially Thanos taking it has kind of destabilized things. And again, we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But what the Living Tribunal tells Adam Warlock is Thanos is working towards the notion of not conquering the universe as we saw him do in Infinity Gauntlet. It's not like that, where he's getting the Infinity Stones, slapping them on a glove, and then basically replacing Eternity. Thanos is going for something much, much grander. Thanos is trying to become the entirety of reality. And that's why future Thanos looks the way he does. He looks like Eternity because that future version of Thanos seemingly has achieved that level of power. He is all that is. He's all in existence. And so the result of this is, is, is you basically have the tribunal tasking Adam Warlock with the idea of being the person that's going to essentially find a way to defeat Thanos. Now, in truth, a lot of people could probably undertake this role, but Jim Starlin chose Adam Warlock because the entirety of the Infinity line of stories, going from Infinity Gauntlet all the way up to this story and, and really Infinity Ending, ties into the idea that there's just something unique and special about Thanos and Adam Warlock. Now, again, Adam Warlock outside the norm, we'll kind of cover that here in a little bit, but they are indeed wholly unique characters. They are indeed characters where, for the most part, yes, they exist in different realities, but they stand away from everybody else, right? They stand separate from everybody else insofar as how they compare to like all the Doctor Stranges and all the Cyclopses and all the Captain Americas and all the Spider-Mans and all the Wolverines and, and Phoenix Forces and so on and so forth. And so what this does is it basically leads to this idea that Adam Warlock has to do something in order to defeat Thanos. And so he's kind of tasked by the tribunal since he's really the only one that can seemingly pull this off. Now, picking back up with Eros and Pip the Troll, they kind of do this jumping around the universe, right? They end up jumping into the future a little bit further and they hop, skip, and around the universe. They go by Earth. They go by all these different places. The space station or the celestial head of nowhere, the planet of Mord, the planet of Spartax, the brood world, a scroll outpost, Rigel, all these different places. They've all been destroyed by Thanos, right? Like all life has been totally eradicated by Thanos. Like even down to the microscopic level, nothing exists there anymore. And so what this does is it picks up with the Living Tribunal meeting with the one above all. Now, we never get to see this in Marvel Comics. We never really see what happens when the Living Tribunal meets with the One Above All. That usually never, ever, ever happens. And in fact, as far as I'm aware, this is the first time in Marvel Comics we've actually gotten to see the two of them converse in this capacity. Usually it's the Living Tribunal saying something like, I represent a power that's beyond everything or whatever it is. You know, he's just super OP, beyond, beyond Omega level is what he is. <laughs> but the One Above All basically tells the Living Tribunal what's going on in this one universe threatens all of creation right? It threatens all things in existence. What's, what's happened here is threatening everything. Now, one of the cool things that goes on is the one above all's face shifts. He changes from one, one race to another, to another, to another. And so it's kind of a cool thing to kind of see this melding and switching and changing that the, the one above all is not a finite construct, right? Like he's just kind of this representation of everything that exists out there. And what the one above all says is this astral regulator is designed to regulate the entirety of the multiverse. That it's not as small beings as the living tribunal thought it was, right? The living tribunal looked at this and said, okay, so basically Thanos taking the Astro Regulator creates a cosmic imbalance. And my job is to enforce that. And because he's kind of outside the norm and he has a level of power and so on and so forth, Adam Warlock, you go take care of it. What the one above all says is no, you fail to grasp the complexity of this. Now this is super important because it hits at this idea that despite all of his vaunted power, the Living Tribunal is not an immutable, all-knowing force, right? Like he's basically, he's screwed up here. It's really what it is, right? He misjudged. He misunderstood the complexity and how 
extreme the situation is. What the one above all says is the astral regulator of each universe, yes, they exist. Their purpose is to keep a universe from crossing over with another. But the truth of this is that they're all tied into a network. So what's basically gone on here is Thanos is playing a giant game of Jenga and he's starting to pull out the wrong pieces. And it's only a matter of time before this whole thing comes crashing down. By taking this astral regulator and pulling it away from his role and then repurposing it for the, for the reason of giving himself omnipotence, he's upset the multiversal balance, right? The balance of all existence. Not only that, what he's doing can actually happen. He could become the entirety of reality itself. In essence, the one above all now views Thanos as a credible threat. And that's what's so crazy about this, right? Thanos is at a level of power now to where the one above all is legitimately concerned. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to Adam Warlock to be the one to pull it off. And so that's why all these things are, are really sort of crazy here. That's why it's so chaotic. It's because what we do is we basically jump to, you know, present day Thanos, for lack of a better word, who's absorbed all these cosmic entities meeting with his future self, right? The one that is essentially merged with all of reality. And the whole reason behind this is the fact that future Thanos is, is fearful of the fact that somebody will figure out what he's doing and basically stop his younger self. And that's the cool thing here, right? This is Jim Solomon playing it smart with reality, that we would look at this and we would say, okay, so if present day Thanos is talking to his future self and his future self becomes a connected to all, all of reality, he becomes everything in existence, presumably, you know, transcending the one above all and the living tribunal and all that, then like, why would he concern himself with like making sure his younger self gets there? And the reason why is because anybody could screw it up at any point in time. It's one thing to achieve that role, but the reality of what Thanos has learned with regards to the multiverse is the fact that there's an infinite number of realities out there and anything can happen. Somebody can pop up, they can be at the right place at the right time. And so it's essentially guiding himself, right? Making sure that like the things that could get in his way don't get in his way, right? That, that just because he ended up in this future, you know, and, and became this being doesn't mean that it's guaranteed, right? Like if, for example, he was supposed to kill Adam Warlock at a particular point in time and he didn't, everything gets thrown off and any number of things can cause that to happen, right? Any number of things can, can get in there. And so what you do is you pick up basically with Eros and with uh, with Pip the Troll kind of coming to this conclusion. It's, it's, it's sort of a red herring here, the way Jim Starlin plays it, because it's like, okay, so like they're going to go back in time. They're going to kill Thanos when he's a baby and basically stop the future. Okay. So like, this is like, and, and there are some writers out there who would say, and this is how we end the story, guys. Thanks for watching. You know, Jim Starlin does this. And before Eros can pull it off, Adam Warlock pops up and says, if you do that, nothing will happen. This not going to work because what's going to happen here is things are going to be worse. And this is really Jim Starlin tying in to everything he's done with regards to Adam Warlock and Thanos and the entire Infinity series, right? The relationship between the two. And when Jim Starlin was writing the old Adam Warlock comics, the relationship between Adam Warlock and Thanos was that Thanos had actually come to the aid of Adam Warlock and helping Adam defeat his own future evil counterpart, the Magus. You know, Magus's attempt to basically gain the, the Infinity Gauntlet for himself during the events of Infinity War, Thanos being part of Warlock in the Infinity watch and basically having the reality stone and then giving a false stone to uh, the Magus is what led to Magus's defeat at the end of the whole thing, right? He had an affinity gauntlet, but he wasn't all powerful because he didn't have all the infinity stones. What Adam says here is that if Eros kills Thanos as a baby, then it means at each one of those pivotal moments throughout the entirety of the universe, when Thanos helps him defeat the Magus, when Thanos gives the Magus a false reality stone, when each one of those things takes place, that it won't happen. And the future that's going to come out of that is going to be a future where the Magus will dominate all of reality and put the kind of things that Thanos did during Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity War and Infinity Crusade and the Infinity Siblings and all that kind of stuff, it'll put all that to shame. And so, of course, Eros basically backs off his actions and destroying Thanos as a baby, and they essentially teleport back to the modern day or 2018 at the time this is being done to the base of where Eros is operating at. And when the question is, what do we do here? You know, if, if this plan of killing Thanos as a baby is not going to work, then what plan do you have? And Adam Warlock says this, and he kills, he kills Eros. Pip the Troll begins to freak out. But the response of Adam Warlock is, according to the Living Tribunal, this is the only thing that's going to work. And so what we do is we basically jump back to the future with, with Thanos, uh, who's essentially absorbed all these various cosmic entities. And this, this you know, we'll, we'll call him like primitive Thanos, more or less in comparison to his like ultra powerful future counterpart. But primitive Thanos is met by the arrival of Eternity. And he was told by his future version, Eternity and Infinity are really a couple of the last stops that you have before this entire thing is, is taken care of, right? Before it's all done. And so what this does is it leads to a conflict between the two. Now, the cool thing about this, and I love how Jim Starlin plays on this, Thanos, this is not his first time up to bat. He's done this dance. He's played this game. He understands the, the significance of eternity and infinity, the power that they wield, but Thanos is not concerned about either of them because the power he possesses in the 
form of the astral regulator is way beyond the power of of infinity and eternity and so where they show up here and they basically start using their various abilities to try to destroy thanos we jump back to eros and eros of course having been killed in the modern day ends up traveling to the realm of mistress death because at the time that he died thanos had not killed and absorbed mistress death yet and so what it meant is that basically being there mistress death is aware of the plot that thanos has and his attempt to like basically show up on her doorstep and kill her at some future point in time which kind of makes sense being a cosmic entity that understands the notions of like life and death and things like that it makes sense that she would be aware of that and so with that being the case she believes eros is there as a spy and so in order to resolve the situation she banishes eros from her realm that action right there is what saves all things in existence like that action right there is why eros is so important and that's why adam warlock killed him is because that one thing is going to, to essentially be the saving grace or at least i assume it is right and so transitioning back to thanos facing off against eternity and, and infinity the reality is they're really more pomp and circumstance here than anything anything else they're blowing a bunch of hot air that for all their talk of like you're going to fall we're going to destroy you all that kind of stuff it's really just more pride than anything else in the face of the astral regulator and the power that it represents in the face of of all these vaunted abilities that he has infinity and eternity fall and it's, and it's kind of crazy because the conflict between the two of them basically spans like all things in existence right it, it expands all of time and space across the universe itself all time across the universe like everything across the entirety of the universe is felt by them from the universe's very beginnings all the way to its very end the point at which it dies like this is what we're talking about here this is the kind of level of power that we're discussing because that's what these characters represent infinity represents time and eternity represents space and so to fight them is to fight all of time and space and so that's why these these conflicts between these beings literally have shockwaves across the entirety of the universe's history and the space the universe occupies it's like being able to witness an explosion all at the same time right so like there, there's like an atomic bomb that goes off or some kind of explosion doesn't matter what it is but like you see it and then a person from 500 years ago sees the exact same explosion and a person in a thousand years sees the exact same explosion some kind of an event across all time and space i know it's super meta and i know it seems kind of kind of crazy and a little mind bending but that's what we're talking about when we're talking about cosmic entities but regardless of how hard they fight and regardless of what tricks they pull up their sleeve and the sense of infinity manipulating time and trying to like age thanos and or, you know try to de destroy thanos and the collapse of his physical form and all that kind of stuff none of it works and the two of them are absorbed into themselves and when that happens thanos is confronted with the with the living tribunal and the living tribunal basically appears here and says this cannot be allowed to stand this amount of power that you have what you've done it's created an incredible imbalance in the universe itself more so than that you threaten the entirety of the multiverse there's nothing to negotiate here there's nothing for us to talk about you thanos are going to have to fall and so what we do is we jump back to eros and so eros resurrecting basically coming back from the dead having been banished from mistress death this is what the living tribunal was referring to by being outside the norm that adam warlock can never die adam warlock will live forever he will always resurrect no matter how you kill him no matter what means it is that he's his physical body is destroyed somebody somewhere will be walking and like they'll die they'll just kill over from a heart attack or they'll be hit by a bus and they'll be used as a method by which adam warlock returns thanos has been banished from the realm of mistress death he was banished from her realm long before this story took place right he was banned he can never ever die like now eros is the exact same way they exist outside the norm because they're immutable forces now right they're not really on par with cosmic entities and so far as like they're all powerful it's not really that way it's simply the natural order of things which is things are born and things die and then there's them they're outside the norm they're outside the natural order and so that's the reason why why eros is so important here is because with him and adam warlock working together presumably they should be able to defeat thanos and so following this we pick up basically with this massive destruction you know this massive explosion seemingly in the entirety of this system and the defeat of the living tribunal and that's why this is important is because when you think of a fight between the living tribunal and you think of the living tribunal's destruction most likely you think of hickman's avengers and new avengers because that's really the only time that we ever saw that happening right the only time we saw before that was during marvel the end and it was really more of thanos absorbing all of reality into himself and then recreating it again usually when you think of like an extremely powerful being like the living tribunal being destroyed you think of like this massive explosion of energy that would just shatter the entirety of the multiverse it's like it's like it's like grabbing a brick and just throwing it into a into a glass house right it's just it's going to shatter the entire thing right it's going to it's going to destroy some part of the glass house and the rest of it's going to collapse under its own weight right that's kind of how you you assume that situation to be the way this plays out though is again it's basically just this idea of thanos absorbing the living tribunal into himself but that's where thanos is now at this moment right now thanos has absorbed the living tribunal into himself or at least that seems to be the case now things are going to be explained a little bit more at a future point in time but like thanos basically jumps in with his future counterpart like starts 
starts talking to him and and essentially his future counterpart says you are now where i am right like we are now where we're supposed to be you have achieved the, the level of power i wanted you to achieve we are now one and literally they merge into a singular being right now this is just jim starlin's way of rectifying the time stream the future version of thanos got modern day thanos to this level of power and the two of them are now occupying the same space at the same time the truth is that they're a singular being right they're the same person both cannot exist at the same time and so they basically become the singular person and when that happens thanos says now the real game begins now i thanos who am essentially the sum total of all of reality will go forward and i will face off against the one above all but with that being said guys we're gonna bring this video to an end if you are new here to comics explain make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the rob core if you guys enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and i will catch you all later peace